Hey, it's Steve from Mix the Texture. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to get a professional polished drum sound and house track using this effects unit, which is called the Drum Polisher. And there's a link around this video where you can grab it if you're interested in. So let me turn this up a little bit. What are we listening to? Well, here is the rack in action. Let me bypass. And active. So it's getting louder. And snappier. If I cut the other sounds, there's the rack, before, after. So what's going on in this session? First, how did I get the rack on all these sounds? Well, look at track 15 is called drum bus with the effects unit on here. And in my routing, all my top loops are going out to the drum bus. So these gray colored ones, conga, top loop, that's hi-hat, snares, claps, all that kind of stuff. This is not including the kick drum. I have my kick drum over here on the mono bus just kick and sub by themselves. <clears throat> Process those in mono with different compression and EQ. So my um, drum polisher rack is only doing mid high frequency stuff with the uh, all the top loops. Uh, the first thing, let's look at what's in the rack. Sub removal service. Um, that is my high pass filter, which is basically just keeping any low rumble away from where the kick drum is. And if you wanna use that knob for a buildup during a dramatic moment in the music, you could certainly automate that in one of your jams. Um, pretty simple, but it's important to make sure your, your drum mix is not getting flubby and having like extra low frequency stuff conflicting with your kick and stuff. Next up, surgical EQ cuts. Now this rack only has an EQ scale knob because obviously I'm not gonna map 20 knobs for all the frequencies and cut and boost and everything. The idea is that we're doing surgical EQ cuts to just remove a few nasty resonances. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna tell you these frequencies will work for every track every time. Ooh, that one's nasty. But the idea is that you have an EQ where you can adjust the frequencies to work with the sounds in your in your rack and or in your drum mix and pull down any kind of built up resonances that are nasty. Um, a good place to check out around 4K, the upper end of the mid range can sometimes be a little bit piercing and shrill, especially if you have a lot of open hi-hats, ride cymbals, those kinds of things. Each individual track might be okay, but when you combine them into a drum stereo mix, all those mid highs can kind of double up or layer up and get to be too much. So I'm doing some basic EQ cuts. Down in the low end, I'm adding a little bit of a boost around 120. Um, if you happen to have some beats with a low conga or even a kick drum layer in here, around 120 hertz is above the sub range enough that you can have a little bit of a low frequency bump in your stereo drum mix to um, add to the, the rhythm of the drums. And this 65 hertz is not necessary. This would only be, if I like had a kick drum in here, that part would be boosting that. So that's my surgical EQ cuts. Uh, now let's go into glue compression, uh, the glue compressor. I'm not trying to do any crazy compress it to death kind of thing. Um, important points here, have a long attack time and put it on auto release. So you're not smashing your attack transients too short. Then you can dial down your threshold to get it, you know, like a few dB of compression, less than five dB, and then add some makeup gain. Remember that the little level meter on the right side of your plugin devices will show you It'll give you a good idea of where your level's at. So in terms of gain staging, I want to keep these meters in the green. They can clip into the red a little bit. It doesn't matter because for other reasons, but it's good to keep it, you know, keep an eye on that and do some basic gain staging there. Uh, long attack time, kind of short release. And we can move on to the drum bus section. This is where we're going to do some tone shaping. So we got a little bit of drive, which feels like volume, but it's got drive going into some uh, tone shaping distortion type devices. I don't want to get distortion on here, but a little bit of crunch can make it feel more lively. Um, by the way, all the devices in this rack are set to bypass if you're not using them. So you can get rid of anything. You don't have to use a ton of processing on every drum group. Uh, the tools are there if you want them. If not, you can bypass them. And dampening, I might take it down a little, a little bit, but yeah, that can give it that kind of warm analog sort of feel if you roll off the high frequencies, but let's just take it down to like 16, 15K or something. The main knob I like to play with in the drum bus is the transients. Listen to how this sounds as I go to negative values on the transient. It's 
starts to act like a gate a little bit, but not as cut or choppy, just kind of uh, putting a little bit of space in between the beats, I guess is how I'd say it. Now listen to the positive values. That starts to sound like heavy compression where you're getting more of the reverb tails or more of the tails of the sounds and the attacks are getting squashed out. That's what I would do if I wanted parallel compression to blend this in with a dry signal, but for making my drums feel like crisp and snappy, I'm gonna hit it pretty hard to make that an obvious shift. Um, I'm gonna leave the drum bus compression off because we already have compression in glue, but just to illustrate, there's a, a knob for that that can really smack your drums. And then once you're hitting them, you can hit the uh, flavor of distortion that the drum bus compressors do it. Let's leave that off for now. And after getting some, a little bit of fuzzy, crunchy tone, now we can do channel EQ for like the EQ color or rough overall boosting. So these are shelf EQs. I don't need to add any low frequencies on here. I might actually subtract and check out this rack. The high pass filter inside channel EQ kicks in. So if I want to totally get rid of the low end, I could do that. I'm not really having a problem with lows in this drum mix, so I don't need to use that very much. The mid frequencies, it can really help to go around 600 hertz and take it down a little bit. Listen to what happens around five or 600. It gets kind of boxy. And we can scoop that out. We're not gonna do a crazy cut, but in general on drums, you can always go to 600 Hertz and find something that is a little bit kind of like boxy or like woofy. Um, with floor toms, kick drums, especially congas, that kind of thing. 600 Hertz is usually not a nice place on drums. And then for the high frequencies, this is like adding the hot sauce or a little salt on top. And again, this knob is mapped to bypass the whole channel EQ. So if you don't want to add any like color tone EQ, you can bypass it. Let's add a little bit of sparkle on top. And finally, some reverb. And this knob is mapped only to go up to 20%. I don't even use 20%, maybe between 10 and 15 somewhere. Before, after, let's get the lows in. So what this rack is doing is bringing it, it's like, I call it a polisher because it's making it feel sparkly, louder, more noticeable. It's not adding a ton of extra stuff, but just little subtle changes to make your drums kind of pop out through the mix a little bit better and make it just more fun to listen to. And then with the instrument group in here, it really gets the drums popping. All right, so what's the theory? What are we trying to do when we're making a drum mix to work with the track in a, in a house track? Number one, keep your kick drum and your sub bass on a separate channel to do different EQ and compression on your low sub frequencies. Number two, take all your instruments, put them into a group of stereo you know, sounds so you can work with them and make sure the bass line is working with the kick bass line and the sub and get all your instruments basically away from the drums. The idea is that I wanna be able to have one channel where all the drums are in one group that I can work with easily without having to mute all the kick and sub, without having to mute all the instruments and take forever on solo switches or whatever. I can just hit that one solo, get my whole drum group in one place, and then get one effects rack on there where I can do a couple of really important things. Number one, check what's in the low frequencies and remove any sub bass frequencies that are in my drum group because we have the kick drum somewhere else. Number two, with the EQ, we are doing some surgical narrow EQ that you might not need on any of these individual channels of drums, but when they combine together, sometimes a few frequency areas add up that you wanna notch out with some surgical EQ, especially in that place in the mid-range where our ears are most sensitive, like 3000 to 5000 Hertz, make sure it's not too much of like a hissing, shrill frequency up there because that can be really harsh, especially on a big sound system. You gotta protect people's ears. Um, after a little bit of surgical EQ, we go to the compressor. And glue compressor, everybody knows it. We just want to make the drums feel louder and avoid killing the transients. The, the key for that is a long attack time, gentle compression, a little bit of makeup gain. In general, with compression, you get a better sound from having multiple instances of compressor 
over a series rather than trying to smash it to death with one and then jack up the makeup gain. So in your um, individual channels, you might have a little bit of compression on each loop or each sound. Then when they come together in the drum bus, think of compressing the group. The idea is you wanna hear every sound and have them all feel natural. That's it, don't overdo it with your compression. Then we move on to drum bus for uh, subtle tone shaping, saturation, distortion, flavor. Uh, you can go as crazy as you want with this one. I like to keep it a bit subtle. The main idea is that the transient knob gets it really feeling snappy and uh, crisp. Like there's like each hit is clear and there's a little space in between them, but you're not doing a hard gate to eliminate like silence in between the hits. You're just kind of making them like very forward kind of a feel. And finally, channel EQ, which I think of this almost like an EQ on a DJ mixer, high shelf, low shelf, mid range, just make it sound good. It's like putting a little salt and pepper on your food. Not too much, but a little bit can really make a nice difference. And finally, some reverb. And if you don't want to use the reverb, you can just turn the volume or turn the, the wet dry blend down and keep another reverb on a return track for the type of reverb you want to get a sound like this. Boom. And there you go. That is what I do with a uh, house track with drums to get a nice professional polished stereo drum mix that I could uh, send out for mastering basically. So that's what it's all about. If you have any questions, drop a comment and you can download this rack from the link below. I'm Steve from Mix Texture. Subscribe to get more updates and mix tips for making electronic music that makes you feel good and makes your audience feel really good about life and everything in it. All right, thanks for watching.